One of the tricks the media employs to provide us with fake news about the election of 2020 is to decontextualize information, to present us with information that makes it look like Donald Trump is doing poorly, when in fact that information actually indicates that he's doing very well. That's what I want to talk about in this video. Fake news. Earlier today, I was reading an article in Inside Higher Ed that pointed out that Joe Biden is outraising Donald Trump among academics by a ratio of five to one. Now, that sounds pretty grim. Five to one. That must be terrible. That must be a sign that Joe Biden's going to become president of the United States in November. But there are two problems with that article. First off is I actually have a memory that still works despite my age. And the second problem is there's this thing called the Internet, because my memory led me to go back and look at what the situation was in 2016. And what I found was that Hillary Clinton was pulling in 99.5% of all the political contributions from academics. In other words, she was, you know, Trump was barely getting any money at all. He was getting 5.5% of the money from academics. If Joe Biden's pulling in money at the rate of five to one, that means Donald Trump's getting somewhere around between 16 and 17% of the contributions this time around. 16 to 17%, whereas the last time he was getting one half of 1%. So what's that tell you? Considering that back in 2016, Donald Trump won and Hillary Clinton lost. So obviously, if you look at the situation, what this tells you is that Joe Biden's support among academics has actually markedly declined compared to what Hillary Clinton had and before her, what Barack Obama had. And then we might ask questions about why is Biden losing support on campuses today? Here's the article in Inside uh, Higher Education. Uh, you see here, Biden beats Trump in higher ed contributions. According to our analysis of federal elections data, employees at colleges and universities have donated five times as much to Joe Biden as did Donald Trump. Man, that looks really bad. And look at these numbers. Joe Biden's got about 4.9 million in contributions versus Donald Trump, who's raised not quite $900,000. And you think, well, gee, that's really terrible. And it just goes on and on. Here's all the listings of all these universities and how much they've given and then how they go through the estimates and all that. And you get down to this five to one ratio. That's really terrible. As I said, it means Biden's getting somewhere uh, around 83, 84% of all the money and uh, Donald Trump's getting the rest. So I went back and I looked around and sure enough, I found this article from uh, 2016, October 2016, donation preferences, Republicans outnumbered in academia. Well, that's not news. The vast majority of faculty and staff members from universities support Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump's percentage of donations for faculty and staff is on average one half of 1% of the total amount raised by each university. One half of 1%. And this time he's raising between 16 and 17%. So what's that tell you? That's He's doing better by about, what, 34 times? So actually, that story about Biden, how well he's doing with academics raising money, is actually an indication that Joe Biden's having problems with people who should be one of his foremost constituencies. And let's just go down here and just look at, at one university. Harvard's faculty and staff have raised a total of 400, almost $450,000 for presidential candidates, with the vast majority, $440,907, raised by Clinton. That sounds, you know, pretty good, right? What's Joe Biden getting from these same universities? Well, if you look here, uh, Harvard gave, is giving him 120000 Remember, 
Harvard donated over $400,000, almost $450,000 to Hillary Clinton. They've given what? Uh, less than a little bit more than a, a less than a third of that uh, to her. And that's really bad news. Yale's given Biden roughly $80,000. And if you go back and look at, at this article, it'll show you that Yale gave Hillary $226,000. So basically, what if you look at the two articles, what it's telling us is that Joe Biden is losing a substantial proportion of what should be one of his easiest constituencies to get support. Instead of getting 99.5% of the financial support from American academics, he's only getting 83 or 84%. Now, that's a dramatic drop. And you can see it even at the universities that are giving him money. They're giving him a third to a quarter of what they gave Hillary Clinton. So while they're still supporting him, they're not supporting him with as much money. They're not as enthusiastic about his candidacy. And why might that be? Why are we seeing these shifts? Now, one can only speculate. I don't have any data. But let's just imagine for a moment. Why might academics be less eager to support Joe Biden than they were Hillary Clinton? And why should they be so much more eager to the extent of almost 30 times as eager or 32 times as eager to support Donald Trump? What's happening on American universities? I mean, I just retired from university. I know what's happening there. You Political correctness has gone wild, diversity, training. You're expected to go into these training sessions and admit that you're a racist just because you're white. You're going to have to put up with all this nonsense, all this indoctrination. And I know there are people on campus who, while they're not speaking out about it because they don't want to get in trouble because they're outnumbered, not because they're conservatives, there are hardly any conservatives left. I mean, my department, when I joined it in 1991, was probably about, uh, you know, four, four to one, liberal to conservative. Uh, with my retirement and another person's retirement, uh, conservatives in that department now represent 4% of the faculty. So we've gone from 20% to 4% in, in about 30 years. So there aren't a lot of conservatives. That wouldn't explain this decline in numbers from people who are liberals. Why aren't they supporting Biden? What is it that they don't like that they're seeing that leads them not only to less be less likely to give a lot of money to Biden, because fewer of them are giving money, and the money they're giving are smaller amounts, but that so many, you know, from a half a percent willing to support Trump to, to almost 16, 17, 18 percent. You know, how can you explain that? And I think it's pretty easy, because I know I talk to people on campus, and they're scared. They're scared they're going to be, you know, uh, canceled. They're going to be ostracized. They're going to be called racist if they don't do everything they're supposed to do. You know, the, I mean, I'm exaggerating to a degree here, but you're expected to, you know, get down on your knees and raise your fist and praise adherence to Black Lives Matter and diversity and everything else that's going on on campus. I don't get all the emails from campus I used to get, but when they are, it was constantly the most likely email I would receive every day from my university was something from the diversity office. There was a new speaker. There was this alert. You know, you need to know you're a racist, basically. That's basically what it would say. You need to know you have biases. That's how they put it. You have racial rooted biases. You know, yeah, they're calling me a racist. You're white. You're a racist. You just need to accept that and then try to figure out how you can minimize the impact of your racism on the university's function, its decisions, your grading, how you handle minority students, how you do everything in your life. And if you don't want to go along with this, you know, it just proves that you're a racist. You're just a bigger racist than all the other white racists, the small numbers of racists. And I think I saw something flash by today. I haven't really had time to digest it all. But some university came out I think it was an Ivy League university, I forget which one, and actually said, 
our university suffers from structural racism, and we have to address that. And the Department of Education today came out and said, so as we understand it, given what you've just said, your university is a racist institution. That means under federal law, you can't get federal funding because we don't fund institutions that are racist. And if you come out and declare on your own that your university is racist, inherently racist, then why should we be funding you? Really good question. Maybe I'll have to do a separate video just on that over the next couple of days. But that's the situation that Biden's in. So what looks like is being portrayed by, you know, inside higher ed as, oh, Biden, you know, five to one over Trump in uh, you know, academic support and contributions, it's actually terrible news for the Joe Biden campaign. It's a terrible indication of what's happening to the prospects of a Democrat victory in November. Donald Trump is going to be reelected. And here's another one of these little signs, little tells that if you read carefully through the press, not don't just look at what they tell us, look at what they don't tell us. You know, use your memory, go use the internet. As I said, progressives seem to forget that the internet exists. They forget that people can go back and look and see what was happening four years ago or eight years ago or 12 years ago. I mean, Joe Biden, the, the headline for that article should have been, you know, Joe Biden, support for Joe Biden collapses in the 2020 campaign, because that's really what the statistics showed compared to what Hillary Clinton did when she was getting 99.5% of donations from the educational establishment. Now, Joe Biden's down into the mid 80s. That's bad news for him. It's good news for Donald Trump. And it, and it tells me, it should tell you, it should tell everybody that there's something going on on American college campuses today among the faculty that it's not being covered by the media. Not everybody is happy with this leftward socialist, Marxist, uh, critical race theory, intersectionality theory trends that we see on our campuses. There are a lot of faculty, traditional liberal faculties were also upset about it. And that's why more of them are supporting Trump. And the ones who are still supporting a Democrat are writing smaller checks because they don't like what they're seeing. And again, all this taken together is just another indication that Donald Trump is headed for re-election in November 2020. So let me know what you think in a comment. And if you got something out of this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos, share the videos with your friends. And until the next time, remember to keep confronting the resistance, stand firm, stand tall, and keep fighting.